What's up folks, Crazy for Games here. Now, I said I would make another announcement video, so here it is. But first of all, I just want to say three things. One, I apologise again for the severe lack of videos lately. This is mainly due to personal reasons and the fact that I've been very busy lately. Very busy with what though? Well, I've got some big news for you guys. I've moved into a new home. That's right. I've been very busy with getting all the stuff and whatnot organised for that, you know, furniture, bills, etc. But that has finally come to an end and I've officially moved in. Moved into a new flat or apartment. Two, my desk and computer are located at the front facing living room window in my flat or apartment, whatever you want to call it which means there may sometimes be a bit of background noise from traffic going past during my recordings, but I'll try to reduce that noise using audacity where possible. And you may have also noticed that my voice does sound a bit echoey. That's simply because of the size of the living room, and I don't think there's much space in other rooms to put my stuff. So I'm hoping the echo doesn't bother you guys too much, but let me know in the comments below. And three, I hope you're all keeping safe and healthy during these scary and difficult times. And I just want to say that if anyone watching this video is affected in any way, shape or form by the coronavirus, like say for example, if you have a relative or a loved one or a friend who is showing symptoms, then my thoughts are with you. Okay, so on to the next playthrough. So you may have seen my latest video showing you what my next playthrough will be. Well, it's going to be a playthrough of GTA Vice City with a 6 star 1 level, similar to my playthrough of San Andreas with 6 stars, and I'll almost definitely be going for 100% completion as well. But how challenging is it going to be? Will it be easier or harder than playing San Andreas with 6 stars? Well, let's do a comparison. In San Andreas, when a tank hits your vehicle, it bursts into flames, which gives you a chance to get out and run. But in Vice City, your vehicle gets blown up immediately, sometimes at the slightest touch. Cops in Vice City lay down spike strips or stingers to flatten your tires. In San Andreas, you can make the helicopters fly away by triggering a replay with the F1 key. Sadly, that doesn't work in Vice City. In San Andreas, there's just one soldier inside a tank, but in Vice City, there are two soldiers. Also, tanks in Vice City have two doors instead of a single hatch on the top like the ones in San Andreas, and it's very easy for the tank's doors to get broken off by collisions. And to make matters worse, honking your horn in Vice City does not make cops or soldiers flinch like it does in San Andreas. So, needless to say, it's a lot harder to avoid getting busted in Vice City. You may also remember the John Marston treatment in my San Andreas Six Stars playthrough where basically if you step outside a building with a high wanted level, you get shot to pieces by the large group of cops who are waiting for you outside. Oh, I told you. Well, in Vice City, something similar happens. If an army vehicle pulls up outside a mission start point, you'll get slaughtered by the soldiers as soon as you regain control of Tommy after the cutscene. And you barely get a chance to react. I'd also like to mention that the John Marston treatment was a term made up by one of my subscribers whose name I've sadly forgotten, so sorry about that. 
But fortunately there are some positives. You don't have to worry too much about roadblocks in Vice City, simply because, for some reason, soldiers at roadblocks make no effort to attack or bust you. Same with SWAT and FBI roadblocks. In Vice City, you can actually make law enforcement vehicles stop by simply shooting them. That doesn't work with tanks though. And finally, unlike in San Andreas, there are no hydras to shoot you down when you get in a helicopter or a plane in Vice City. Now moving on, I have a brand new, faster computer with Windows 10 and I'm really happy that Vice City is working okay with Windows 10 and that I've managed to get mods working for the game. Without mods, it's impossible to get six stars right from the beginning of the game, which is what I wanted. Now, I was originally going to use the complete mission loader mod to get six stars but according to Jacob Smith there were a few issues with it so ultimately I decided to instead use the seven stars mod created by Hollywood Jack. Now this mod allows you to have six stars right from the start and as its name implies you can get an additional seventh star when you have 7 stars, I think it's pretty much the same as when you have 6 stars, except you also get chased by a very fast hunter helicopter which fires missiles at you. So I won't be doing this playthrough with 7 stars, just 6 stars. But once the playthrough is finished, and god knows how long that'll take, I will most likely see how long I can last with 7 stars. Also, there will be two points during the story where my max wanted level will go back down to 5 for a short time, specifically after completing Guardian Angels and during and after Phnom Penh 86. But fortunately, once I save and then reload my save file, it will go back to 6 again. So special thanks to Jacob Smith for all your support and tips regarding these mods. One thing I have noticed with the 7 stars mod is that if you commit too many crimes when you have 6 stars, your wanted level will go up to 7 stars, which I don't want. However, if I do feel as though I'm about to go up to 7 stars, all I have to do is type in the raise wanted level cheat and that will stop that from happening. From what I understand, there's a hidden points system that the game uses to determine how high your wanted level is. And once that reaches a certain amount, you'll get a new star. So by entering the raise wanted level cheat when I think I'm about to get 7 stars, those points get reset. And no, the raise wanted level cheat does not allow you to get 7 stars. There's actually a separate custom cheat code included with the mod for that. And one last thing, I can only get 6 stars by inputting the raise wanted level cheat 3 times in a row, because the cheat only raises your wanted level by 2 stars. Now that sounds like a massive pain in the arse, but fortunately I have discovered a simple workaround. Believe it or not, if you input a cheat when the game is paused, that cheat will become activated once you unpause the game. So all I have to do is pause the game, input the raise wanted level cheat three times, and I'll have six stars once I unpause. This does mean, however, that I will be pausing the game a lot during the playthrough. But hey, it's a lot easier than fumbling with the keys during gameplay. So I'm really excited to get this playthrough started, and I've done uh, practice runs already and two missions that I found really really challenging were Love Juice for Love Fist and Hog Tide for Mitch Baker but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Like I said I will almost definitely be, go be going for 100% completion so wish me the best of luck. So stay tuned 
and stay healthy, like I said. Stay healthy, stay safe during these hard times. And as always, stay solid and don't let the six star water level bite.